Good day, this is Tracy Davis with the Journey Through the Book of Psalms series. And today we are in Psalm 85, Prayer for Revival. To the Chief Musician, a Psalm of the Sons of Korah. Let's go to our Father God in prayer. Father God, we come in this time in the name of Jesus. We thank you and praise you, Father God, for all your good and your kindness. We thank you once again for this opportunity to come before your throne, Lord God. And Father God, we just thank you for what you're going to teach us and instruct us in your word, Father God. And we ask for your clarity, your wisdom, your wisdom, your knowledge, your understanding, and your insight, Father God, so that we can take what we learn from you, Father God, and apply it to our lives and share it with others. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, Psalm 85 is... A lamenting psalm and so we're going to say it's a communal lamenting psalm whereas uh, the sons of Korah are crying out uh, for God to deliver the nation out of uh, a situation or out of a trouble and so um, this is a 13 line psalm so we should you know fly through it rather quickly but you know I know how that goes and uh, so we do have some reference scriptures in cross reference scriptures as well and so let's go ahead and get started in line one. Lord, you have been favorable to your land. You have brought back the captivity of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people. You have covered all their sin, Selah. You have taken away all your wrath. You have turned from the fierceness of your anger. And so now, um, this is a prayer for God to revive the nation and so here the sons of Korah coming out acknowledging God God Lord you have been favorable to your land you have brought back the captivity of Jacob and so um, so he telling God that he's been favorable you know that that favor that remember that unmerited favor that grace um, so he has been favorable to uh, his land and also he has brought back the captivity of Jacob. And now that refers us to Joel 3 and 1 that says, For behold, in those days and at that time when I bring back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem. And now Joel 3, 1 sends us to Jeremiah 30 verse 3 that says, For behold, the days are coming says the Lord that I will bring back from captivity my people Israel and Judah says the Lord and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers and they shall possess it so that just to corroborate uh, that scripture on showing that how um, or giving an example how God had brought back the captivity of Jacob moving into line two it says you have forgiven the iniquity of your people so that evil that wickedness of the people and um, then it says you have covered all their sin Selah and so he just had to pause right there you know after that you know talking about how God was favorable how he brought back the captivity he forgave the iniquity and covered all their sin all right now moving into line three you have taken away all your wrath uh, you have turned from the fierceness of your anger. So here it is. He's saying that God has uh, taken away his wrath because when God, you, we don't want God to act in his wrath. Okay. Um, and then you have turned from the fierceness, not just the anger, but the fierceness of his anger. So he's telling God about that. Moving into uh, the second stanza. Now, this is what he's asking God to do. Restore us, O God, of our salvation, and cause your anger toward us to cease. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. And so, in elaborating on four, it sends us to, for restore us, O God, our salvation, and cause your anger to toward us to cease or to stop or to end that sends us to psalm 80 lines 3 and 7 3 says restore us O god cause your face to shine and we shall be saved and when we talked about how god's face shines and when his face shines then that will uh 
cause the enemies uh, to, you, you know, to destroy the enemies. Then seven says, restore us to God of hosts, cause your face to shine, and we shall be saved. Because God's face is so bright, and then, then that his face is so bright, then it will cause uh, the enemies to, you know, to stand at, at, um, at bay or to be destroyed. Because anybody who looks, looks on God will not live. Okay, so that's why he's asking God's face to shine. And so let's pause here and then we'll pick it up in line five.